In this video, we'll be talking about different stages of wound healing. So, wound healing has different time kinetics. Different wound heals differently. For example, there are fast healing wound and there are slow healing wounds. Wounds in skin, intestines, connective tissue heals relatively faster because they contain stem cell which can easily replenish for this damage. So high regenerative potential. In contrast, the wounds in muscle or let's say in nerve doesn't really heal very quickly and sometimes doesn't heal at all because of low regenerative potential. So in this video, we are going to focus on a superficial wound, let's say, let's say a skin wound due to a knife injury or let other kind of damage and try to understand the steps of the wound healing process. So first, there would be hemostasis, second, inflammatory reactions, three, proliferation and remodeling. All these four steps would be looked into details in this particular video. So stay tuned till the end. So let's begin with a uh, hemostasis. Imagine there is a skin uh, damage here and it's quite a deep cut. So the blood vessels underneath the skin would be ruptured and there would be blood coming out of the uh, particular wound. So after a point of time, there would be vasoconstriction. That means constriction of the blood vessels, which would make it difficult for blood to ooze out from that region. Also, there would be platelets that would adhere to the site of injury and they would attract more and more RBCs to try to form a blood clot. Eventually, the platelet plug is formed, followed by the fibrin mesh. So the fibrin mesh platelet plug all ensures that there is no more blood loss. And this is the hemostasis phase. That simply means like prevention of the external blood flow. Now, Meanwhile, there are bacteria, viruses, etc., or pathogens who tried to invade through that breach in the skin. So, obviously, body has to deploy immune cells to fight them. One of the immune cells that are deployed first are these neutrophils. Neutrophils kind of engulf pathogens like bacteria. They can also recognize the nature of pathogen using the toll like receptor that they have, and eventually, macrophages are recruited. Macrophages are recruited second to the neutrophil. So they take some time to come to the injury site. So phagocytosis by the neutrophil is the first event. Then there are several inflammatory cytokines such as interleukin 1 and 6 are actually secreted by macrophages and neutrophil. This attracts several other immune cell in the region of invasion. Just, just that they can fight the infection better. So neutrophil extraversation is the next step. So the key events in this inflammation phase is phagocytosis and cytokine secretion and fibroblast and endothelial cell activation. So these inflammatory cytokine can also activate fibroblast and endothelial cells in the near vicinity. So <clears throat> overall in this in the step two of the inflammation, it's also important to note that macrophages play a very important role. They secrete substances that actually lead to angiogenesis. That means formation of the new blood vessel. So that is why we need to understand what are the substances that are secreted by these macrophages or other immune cells. So one of the key factors are PDGF, uh, TGF beta, etc. So here are a few of the cell types that are going to secrete some stuff that help in wound healing. Platelet secretes TGF beta and platelet derived growth factor. All that leads to angiogenesis and fibrosis. Vascular remodeling and smooth muscle migration is also triggered by these same factors. Then there are keratinocytes, fibroblasts, macrophages, mast cells, all of that secrete VEGF or uh, vascular endothelial growth factor. So basically um, that stimulates angiogenesis process. Fibroblast growth factor is secreted by fibroblast, which helps in tissue remodeling. And metalloproteinases, which are secreted by sometimes macrophages and other cell types, can remodel the ECM, and that is required for the end stage of the wound healing process. The third step of the wound healing process is the proliferation phase. At this phase, angiogenesis would pick up and there would be several blood vessels which are forming underneath the injury side. So more and more oxygen could be supplied to this particular region. Now, 
Basically, there are granulation phase where fibroblasts proliferate and produce extracellular matrix components such as collagen, fibronectin, proteoglycans, etc. Then, ultimately, there would be migration and proliferation of the epithelial cells nearby to close this wound. You can see here, there is re-epithelialization which is happening. And we can see that same event from a top view of the wound. Here, there are new cells, keratinocytes, which are now migrating to close up the wound. So, after re-epithelialization, at the end of re-epithelialization, the uh, ECM remodeling happens. So, the EC ECM remodeling started at the end of proliferative phase. Now, the ECM would be remodeled. Metal, uh, metalloproteinases and metalloproteinases inhibitor would sort of like remodel these uh, extracellular matrix in a meaningful way, which is essential. So, proper ECM remodeling is essential for wound closure. Now, there are different types of wound closure. For example, there is primary intention healing. In this case, what happens is the wound edges are closely brought through, let's say, by sutures. So, it re really form a clean uh, cut. It, it, it can be found in case of like surgical wounds. There is secondary intention healing. Like wound edges are far apart and they cannot be basically... Uh, bring in, uh, brought in together. So the healing starts from the bottom and, and ended in the up. So it's kind of like a bottom up healing approach. But it forms a distinct scar, sometimes keloid as well. So that's pretty much it. In this video, we talked about different stages of wound healing. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video.